What is up everybody? This is Mike with Tiny Life Big Mission and this week in the Word we are launching a new series called Bad Religion, the doctrine behind Christian denominations. Grab your word of truth and let's jump in. Welcome back to This Week in the Word. This segment of the channel focuses on a weekly Bible study where we share truth based on what the Word of God says. If you have questions about God or you are seeking truth, I want to welcome you and I thank you all for joining today. I hope this video is a good resource for your personal study. This week we continue our investigative study on doctrine in a new series called Bad Religion, The Doctrine Behind Christian Denominations. Today we are introducing the series. We are going to discuss some of the topics that we will be covering during the series and what you can expect to get out of it. Just as a reminder, I've created a playlist called Bad Religion, which can be found under the playlist tab on our channel's main page. This video, along with other future videos in this series, can be found there. If you're new to this channel or are interested in understanding more about our position, please check out our quick reference video on our five guiding principles. I will link that video in the top of the screen here. In this series, we are going to be covering the doctrine behind Christian denominations. The umbrella of the term Christian or Christianity is vast and it encompasses a wide spectrum of conflicting beliefs, views, and traditions. To be a Christian simply means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. So why are there so many divisions in a group of people who all claim to follow the same leader? I'm sure that there are tons of opinions out there to explain the reason behind this. In fact, the spectrum is probably just as big for the reason behind the division as it is for the division itself. To me, it boils down to people. The hearts of people are divisive. People are prone to extremes. People like to rebel. People like to categorize things and establish teams and cliques and factions. People like to be right and they like to prove others wrong. All of this comes back to the wickedness of humans' hearts. I'm no different or any better. In my nature, I am very much this way. It's only Christ in me that gives me any hope to change this. All of these behaviors are carnal. They're not spiritual. And Paul talks about this a lot. Uh, in fact, grab your Bible real quick, and I want to give you an example of this in uh, 1 Corinthians 3. Go on ahead and pause it if you need to to find this in your Bible. But for the sake of context, we are going to start reading in verse 1. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 7. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Paul here is addressing this church at Corinth. They are not walking as spiritual Christians. They are walking as carnal Christians. These people are believers. They are saved, but they're not walking spiritually. They're walking carnally. Verse 2, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. So Christians can be in a place where they aren't able to bear the truth. They're not able to bear meat. They think carnally and they only want to hear carnal things. Verse 3, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? You see this show up in churches all over today and amongst Christians all over today. There's envying, there's strife, that's just conflict and divisions. And it's because of the church as a whole is very carnal today. Verse 4, For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? So what he's saying here is that there are people who are claiming to be followers of Paul or followers of Apollos. They're, they're making divisions. They're making denominations amongst the body of believers because they're carnal. Verse 6, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Again, Paul is writing this letter to the church at Corinth. He's addressing people who are born again believers, yet they were carnal. As the body of Christ, we are not supposed to be divisive. 
We are not supposed to fight and hate. Paul called this having envy and strife. That is hard not to do when believers are carnal. Just because a person believes the gospel and is saved from their sin doesn't mean that they are now magically just like Jesus. Believers can still get things messed up, they can still sin, they still have free will, and they can walk carnally in their flesh as long as they like. Salvation doesn't fix any of that. How we become spiritually minded is by spending time with God in His Word. We'll talk a little bit about being spiritually minded in this series, but it's not the main point of this series. The point of this series is to look at all the different denominations that claim Christianity, to expose what they believe and why they believe it, to see what doctrine they teach and where that said doctrine is established from. In this series, I want to present each religious system from an unbiased position, much like a good journalist or a detective would, presenting nothing but the facts. I understand that each one of these different groups proclaim to love Jesus, they support their views from Scripture, and they, they believe that they are following God. So, in order to start this next step of our investigation, we will need to establish a baseline of what it takes to be a Christian, because there's so many different groups out there that call themselves Christian, and they all teach different doctrines. They all teach different baselines. So we're going to establish a baseline for the point of this series. There are tons of different doctrines out there, as you will soon see, and that's because the Bible is a booby trap. Hebrews 4.12 says, for the word of God is quick, and that word quick just means alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Bible is written in such a way that you can find a verse to prove just about anything that you want to make the Bible say. This is what I call lifting a verse. Now, to add to that, there are a lot of things that the Bible speaks about. Some topics are only spoken of once, others often. Some are spoken of in great clarity, others are extremely vague. All of that is to say that this book that Christians all claim as their textbook, known as the Bible, is very, very, very complex. To be a Christian doesn't mean that you have to be in agreement with every minute doctrine taught from the Bible. Being a Christian just means that you've simply chosen to believe the gospel or the message of salvation spoken of in the Holy Scriptures. There's a difference here. The difference is what I call close-handed issues and open-handed issues. Now, I know that there are people out there who will disagree what I qualify as close-handed and open-handed because that's what people do. They are carnal and divisive. And that's just too bad. I'm the person who is teaching this, and I have to establish a baseline or a measuring point in order to teach this. So, for the purposes of this study, I am distinguishing the differences in the doctrines that pertain to a lost person's salvation that are clear in the scripture from the doctrines that are, that are not about salvation. The doctrines that pertain to salvation, I am calling closed-handed. Those the, these doctrines are the foundation of what it means to be a Christian. They are the fundamentals. They are biblically based, they are clear, and they are the dividing line. Meaning, if you do not believe these doctrines, you are not a Christian, regardless if you claim to be a Christian. The close-handed group includes doctrines like Jesus is God, the virgin birth, blood atonement, bodily resurrection, and salvation acceptance. These are a hill that all Christians die on. Disagreement in these doctrines is an issue of fellowship. Now, the open-handed doctrines are open. We can debate and disagree and still be friends. Open-handed doctrines are not related to salvation. There are all kinds of open-handed doctrines that are included but not limited to tithe, God's image, dispensationalism, repentance, free will, eschatology, permanence of salvation, baptism, even the King James Version is in this category. This list is very long, and we will not be able to cover all of the things that would fall under this category, but we will cover uh, some different points of views of these doctrines in this series. Uh, in the beginning of this series, we will be covering all the closed-handed doctrines. Again, this is to establish the dividing line between those who are Christian and those who claim Christianity. 
Once this baseline is established, we will begin to look at the spectrum of denominations and what they believe and why they believe it. Because the Bible isn't crystal clear on every topic, people tend to read what the scriptures are saying differently. These different views lead people to division, and that is where different denominations come from. There isn't a single denomination, or person for that matter, myself included, who has it all figured out. Now, for this reason, I can understand why people divide themselves into groups of like-minded people. It's just easier that way. But I see no evidence or any form of denominational division in the Bible. This includes groups that call themselves non-denominational. Non-denominationalists are still a denomination of their own. Personally, I think that denominations are the work of Satan used to divide the body of Christ, and he has put the work in. Now, just like no group has it all right, there isn't a group out there that has everything all wrong either. Even cult groups that place themselves under the umbrella of Christianity tend to get some of their doctrine correct. Part of that goes back to deception. People won't believe a deception unless there's a, a hint of truth in there. There has to be something that is right in order for them to believe it. My hope in covering what other people believe is that you will be edified and better equipped to meet them on their level to speak truth to them in love. Helping them see past doctrines that are not biblically based, which they have been taught as truth and hold on to. And all of this is for the purpose of pushing all believers to study their Bibles. 1 Thessalonians 5.20 tells us that we are to prove all things and to hold fast to that which is good. The way we test or prove doctrines is by studying them in the Word of God. It is not enough to find a verse to support a doctrine that we like. We must also search to see if there is anything in Scripture that goes contrary to what we believe. So as we look at each individual denomination, we will start by comparing that denomination's view of the close-handed doctrines. This will qualify the denomination to see if they are truly a Christian denomination or if they are just a group who has chosen to include themselves in the umbrella of Christianity. From there, we will look at the open-handed doctrines where, for the purpose of this series, I will categorize each of the denominational doctrines we cover into one of three classifications, which are sound doctrine, church fallacy, and the traditions of men. Let me take a second to explain what each of these classifications will mean. First is sound doctrine. This classification represents the denominational teachings that are biblically based and that do not go contrary to other parts of the Bible, meaning the position is biblical and cannot be confidently disproven from the Bible. This doesn't mean that I agree with every doctrine that gets this classification. In fact, there are a lot of doctrines that are disputed from opposing positions, and the teachings on both sides could be classified as sound. Again, the scripture is not clear on every topic, even if we think that it is. Remember that these doctrines are all open-handed, that are backed by scripture, and there is nothing that goes contrary to it in the scripture. This classification doesn't say that the doctrine is right, it just means that it is sound. The next classification is church fallacy. A church fallacy is a doctrine that can be proven by a verse or a precept, but it can also be disproven by other verses or other precepts. This classification represents doctrine that are derived from scripture taken out of context. The last classification is the traditions of men. This classification is not rooted in scripture at all. These doctrines are based on morals, rules, and principles. And they may be good, but they're not found, taught, or instructed from the Bible. These doctrines are just made by man. So that's the overview of this series and what it looks like and how the flow of it will work. I wanted to give you this outline to help prepare your heart. I encourage you to not deconstruct your faith, but rather examine it. Look at your beliefs that you hold to and ask, why do I believe this? Is this in the Bible? What does the Bible say about this belief? Does the Bible say anything contrary to it? Steady this out. I ask you to do this in hope that it will draw you closer to God's word to help strengthen your belief in what is proved and to help you let go of beliefs that you think and hold as true that are not biblical. 
Now, there are a lot of things that most of you out there do not know about me and the testimony of how God has worked in my life, like how I walked away from a blossoming 20 plus year career as a junior level executive in a Fortune 500 company to follow the calling that God gave me to start this YouTube ministry. People from that time in my life thought I was nuts, and most of them probably still do. But it wasn't a hard decision for me because I knew that God was calling me to this. God has guided me from the beginning, and He continues to guide this ministry still today. It doesn't matter if people believe it, understand it, or agree with it. This is between me and God. I am doing my best to teach what He has for me to teach, and I believe that everything I teach is given to me from God. I spend a lot of time in study and in prayer, and I take the work that God has given me very seriously. Now, the reason that I'm sharing this is because of some events that have transpired over the last couple of weeks. My wife, Caitlin, and I have been attending a local church for the last six months or so. Now, this church is a Baptist church, and I knew that we didn't agree with all the Baptist doctrine before we began to attend, but God led us there, so we went. When we first started to attend, God confirmed to us that this is where he wanted us to be. The people were kind and welcoming, and the pastor was as well. We went to every service that we could, we volunteered for everything that they needed help with, and we started to work and build relationship and community with the body of believers there. Early on, one of the members found out that I had a YouTube channel and saw some of the doctrinal differences between what I taught and what he believed, so he confronted the pastor about it. The pastor and I discussed our different views, but we agreed that there wasn't any issue worthy of breaking fellowship. That was until July 2nd when my video on baptism came out. My pastor had just preached a message about baptism on June 25th, and his view of baptism is very different than mine. So he took my video as a rebuttal to his teaching and kicked me and my wife out of his church. Now, honestly, my video had nothing to do with his sermon. I had that message planned months in advance. Uh, the timing was the issue. The pastor believed that knowing what he had preached on the 25th, I should have changed the content of my study. And I fully understand this point if I was just whimsically throwing out videos on YouTube. But that's not the case. As I stated before, this work is my calling. I believe that the timing was of God because God guided the study and the baptism video was the last video in the series. There was nothing I could have changed this topic of steady to after hearing the message on the 25th. My point in diving into all this is to hopefully dissolve or diffuse any possible further misunderstandings while proving a real life example connecting the need for this series. Now this series is not a result of what took place. God has been leading me to do this series for some time now. I have referenced it in multiple times in different videos, some of which date back to 2021, which was before I ever even knew this church existed. I have also made mention of this series in replies to emails that I have received from viewers, and some of those date back to over a year ago, which, again, was before I ever even knew this church existed. I do not adulterate what God has given me to teach. I teach based on what I believe God has given me, and I do it when God gives for me to do it. So if anyone from that church happens to be watching this, please know that I have no ill feelings. I wish you all the best and will continue to pray for you. Um, me and Caitlin are a little hurt by this, but we love you guys, and we know that one day we will fellowship again together. Additionally, a reason for bringing this up is again, God's timing. This is a prime example of religion and how the traditions of men make the word of God of none effect. What are the odds of this happening right before launching a new series on bad religion? I think I would have better odds with the lottery. Anyway, we are going to dive into all kinds of topics and by the end of this series, I hope that you will have a better understanding of what different groups believe, what the Bible says, and a heart to reach those who are lost in their religion. It's going to be an awesome series. I'm super excited about it, and I hope that you tune in. That's going to conclude this week's study, but before you go, if you are wanting to know how to support the work that we do here, there are four easy ways. First is you can share our study with those who you know who need the Word of God. Also, you can share them on all your social media platforms. 
Second is to like this video if you found the content helpful. And third is to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. These three actions support the algorithms of YouTube to help the word to go out. But most importantly, the biggest way that you can support this ministry is through prayer. James 5.16 says that the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. People need truth and your prayers can help, so please pray for this mission. If you have questions or would like to share your story, the best way to communicate with me is by email, which is tinylifebigmission at gmail.com. I simply ask that you remember our five guiding principles before reaching out. All right, guys, that's it for this week. I hope to see you next week in this word. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.